Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Hey, I apologize for not having any uh, videos up for the last month. Uh, but I'm going to try to get some more coming in here. It's uh, Summer's rolling around and I figured I'd build my boys a couple fire pits for the uh, yard. Uh, probably just use like a, maybe a 30 gallon propane tank. Uh, so uh, we're going to see what we could do here and uh, give you guys a good uh, uh, video on how to build a, a fire pit. I'll be building two of them. Uh, so we'll get to it and see how it turns out. I think you guys will like it. I don't think it's going to be a hard project. I actually don't have anything laid out. I'm just, uh, just going to build them just kind of like right off the top of my head. Uh, and we'll just go from there. You know, things may change. and That's a lot of times why I don't make a, a blueprint or something. Hey, let's do it. Things change, man. I mean, you might find a better idea as you're building it. So, uh, let's hang in there and see how it turns out. Okay, as you can see, I got a couple of these old tanks. Uh, these are very old tanks. Um, uh, they're, I don't even think you could use them anymore. They have the old style valve in them. And uh, you don't even see these tanks anymore with this valve. But one thing nice about these valves is when you turn it on, you can tell that there's no gas in this tank. Um, now the newer ones, when you turn it on, um, you can't tell if there's gas in the tank unless you put a gauge now you can buy a gauge like this and it's got a gauge on it you can screw it on there if you notice it's got the different tip on it. it's for the newer tank uh, you can screw it on there and you'll tell if there's any gas in there but I can tell already that uh, this one doesn't have any gas in it because this is an open valve so <clears throat> I notice it has a little bleeder even on the side of it here you can break loose so it doesn't have any gas in it and I wouldn't recommend to a lot of people doing what I do unless you know what you're doing. Because if you go cutting into this tank and it's got gas in it, you could uh, blow yourself up probably. So I wouldn't do that. Uh, so, you know, if you don't know too much about them, ask somebody or something. You know, Make sure that tank is completely empty. Uh, sometimes you can take, like I have a little round heater, you know, it'll actually still screw into the old tank. And I can screw it in there and turn it on and, and if I hear gas, I know there's gas in there. But I know for a fact these tanks are empty. So what I'm going to do, I'll shut the valve back off and turn the bleeder off because there's probably still an odor of gas inside this that may catch on fire. So the first step on these things, what I'm going to do I'm going to cut this. You can see where these are welded on. You have a little spot weld here. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to turn around. You got one here. I'll cut that off. And then I'll cut this one off. And that will give me access to this uh, top piece up here. Uh, to get a wrench in there to turn that thing, you pretty much need this off. I'm, I'm sure they have a wrench for that, but I don't have one. And I don't need one, so um, I want to make sure I get this valve out. Because what I'll do, so I'll run some water in there, rinse it out a little bit, and uh, try to make sure it's as clean as I can get it before I start actually cutting the tank itself. Um, <clears throat> I think I said these were 30 gallon. I think they're 30 pounds. I think each one of these tanks might hold 30. Now you got the smaller one. I think it's a 20 pound. It's about you know two-thirds of what this tank is so that's going to be our next step we're going to go ahead and get these cut off and then uh, see if we can get these valves in here. okay now we have access to our valve up here see it'll make it easier for me to get something on here which would probably be a pipe wrench or something so I can get this turned out. Um, 
Like now we could actually open the valve. We're done cutting. We're not throwing any sparks, so we could open everything up. Then we'll try to get this valve out of here. Okay, I tried with a uh, pipe wrench to get this off. I have a pretty good sized pipe wrench here. And I could turn the valve maybe, but I can't hold the tank. I could wrap something around it, maybe a belt or something, twist it up, but it's not like I need this valve. So, I know there's no gas in this tank, and I've heard tell people knocking the tops off with a hammer. So maybe I'll give that a shot and see if it'll knock that off, because all I need to do is rinse some water around inside there. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Not as easy as they say, huh? That was the old bleeder. Oh, hell. Guess what? It's turning now. Maybe that's the way to get them off. Okay, valve's out. And it does smell like propane. So, okay, we got the valve out. I do believe this thing will light up. We'll see. I think all the worry about cutting this tank is gone. If it won't light with that torch, I don't think me cutting it's going to be that bad. So, I want to put a, um, a six inch piece of stove pipe coming out the top of this with a cap on it, I'm thinking. So I need, to, I need a, some type of a ring to put up here. And I know it's going to be about six inches. So that'd be a six inch circle cut up here. Then I'm going to cut something out of the side so you can put your wood in there. And then on the bottom, I'm just going to put like a, I'm thinking maybe a pedestal type thing. I, I don't know yet. I guess that's why I don't have a blueprint, you know? So we're going to figure that out as we go. I don't have the, uh, well, I have some six inch pipe up there, but it's got to be cut. And it's pretty heavy stuff. And I think all I need is about two inches of it so I can slide a piece of black pipe, stove pipe, right down on top with a little cap on it. So it look nice. So maybe I'll make a template out of some cardboard of the opening I want to cut in the front. Because uh, I think that would be a pretty, I have everything to do that. So we'll get this thing up here. <clears throat> get it marked out for the opening. Okay, we're going to make our template for our opening in our uh, little cooker here. <clears throat> um, I made a mark uh, four inches up here, four inches here, and six here. I just don't want that to go, I don't want it to go too high. I want to leave room in the bottom and put your wood in the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to freehand a mark through here I wanted this to kind of be rounded and I don't have anything big enough to go around so I'll just freehand the mark through here and then what I'll do is I'll flip this thing over and then I'll just cut this mark and it should give me the same mark on both sides. doesn't have to be perfect. We're not trying to win any prizes. 
I have a little edge here on the side I'm going to cut off. We do want it to look presentable, but this would be our opening. And that's something I got to put on the tank here and see if, what it's going to look like. I want the opening to be rather big because if you decide you want to say you want to put some hot dogs in this thing or something you know and then you want to be able to get the heat off of it but you yet you want it to be strong enough and that's a pretty good little opening there you'll be able to throw small chunks of wood in there nothing big this small so I think I think this might work out okay actually you probably could uh, take one of them clamps where you put a hamburger on it and put it in there too. I mean you could probably cook in this thing and everything. So we'll use this as our template, get it marked out and get it cut out. Okay I kind of bent the cardboard so it'd lay over top of this a little better. And uh, I got me some soapstone here. It's stuff used to mark on metal. We're just going to trace this piece out on here. And I lined this up with the seam in the tank. So I'm just following that seam in the tank in the middle. There's a seam that goes down through here. Just following that seam down. So now we got our opening. We'll get this uh, we'll get this cut out. Okay, a little while back I bought a 110 plasma cutter. I've only used it a couple of times, but uh, that's what I'm going to try to use to cut this out with. So, we're just going to give it a try and see what happens here. Now, from cutting this one here, I think the next one that I cut, I'll keep it above that weld a little bit because that weld, it's a little thicker metal. It's only 110 and only cuts up to a quarter inch thick metal. But I'll keep it up just a little bit away from that, that weld that goes through here, that seam. So let's see if we can knock that thing out of there. She is. Yeah, see there's a there's actually another layer of steel in there. So it's not just one layer, there's two layers in there. I didn't know that, or I would have uh, moved it up a little bit. But we'll fix it up, we'll make it look good. So we'll have our opening cut out for where we can throw our wood in there. We're going to work on uh, probably, I don't know, maybe the pedestal, I don't know. We'll maybe cut this bottom and rip off the bottom because it don't need on there either. We don't need none of that. And again, I might leave it on there. It might be a waste of time to take it off. We'll see. Okay, what I've done here is I just cut a circle out of six inch. You know, it's a six inch circle. It's a little bit shy of six inches because when I weld that six inch piece of pipe on the top here I want to make sure that it rests on this tank and I cut the center out to fit over top of this so what I did is I just stuck it down on top of there and took my soapstone and went around it and made my mark so that gave me a place for my smoke to come out so I'm gonna get this cut out now Okay, now we got the top cut out. <clears throat> Not too bad. Um, we'll be grinding this down, but we won't. We don't have to clean up none of this in here because you're not going to see it. But we'll clean up this edge real good. That way, when you go to weld, you'll have a good clean surface to weld on. As you can see, these tanks were thrown away. They were no good anyhow. So we're going to cut them up and see if we can make some more use out of them. Uh, I think these will make nice little brackets. 
to, uh, you know, go on. Maybe you can put them on a porch or put them out in the yard. or And they shouldn't be that heavy. You can't move them around. Uh, that's the whole thing. I don't want to be heavy, too heavy. I was actually going to uh, weld a solid 6 inch pipe off of here. But even a quarter inch uh, solid piece of pipe would be so heavy it would be not good to move this thing around. So that's what we got done so far. I'll see what we can get done next here. Alright, I found this old piece of metal. I was laying in a scrap pile. I figured I'd uh, put a little air vent down here. And then if you get water or something gets in there, maybe it would drain out this hole. So I figured if anything, it would give it a good airflow through there. So I just kind of eyeballed this up, made a mark around it. And I'm going to take my cutter and I'll try to cut this out. And I might have to adjust it a little bit, you know what I mean, to get it straight in here. But I thought a nice little air vent at the bottom of this to give it a little more airflow. And then be able to drain any water might be in there, whatever. I try to get it as close to the bottom as I can. So we'll get this little circle cut out. Now, I just eyeballed this thing to be about in the center. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have any problems with it. It doesn't matter where it's at. As long as it gets a little air, it gets everything out of there. Okay, right now we're going to get ready to weld this uh, vent pipe uh, for a draft on the bottom of this little stove. Or little, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to weld this into place. And then uh, we'll be done with this part down here. Okay, as you guys can see, we've got two of these. Uh, we've got two of them. Going to build two of them at the same time. Uh, this one's turning out, you know, I knew to bring this lip up a little bit. See, I cut that one down, so I got a lot of grinding here to do. So uh, this one here won't be so much grinding. But uh, <clears throat> I keep... Uh, you know, you learn as you go when you're cutting this kind of stuff and you're building this type of stuff. So, anyhow, uh, I haven't figured out a pedestal and I still need to cut the two pieces of six inch pipe up here, the heavier pipe, so I can slide my little stack down in top of there. So, we'll keep on going. Okay, this morning I'm going to be working on a couple of these plates right here. And uh, they're going to go on... Uh, the front of this so I can control the air flow going through this tank from the bottom now I'm not sure that I really needed this in the bottom of here you probably don't have to put it in there but I put it in there just in case like if water gets in here it'll be able to flow out I could have drilled some holes in the bottom though I mean but I just thought maybe with a little more airflow in the bottom you get this fire going better and also I could take a propane torch and stick it in the bottom here and fire this up and make it easier for me to light so I'm not sure that we need them on there but we're gonna cut a couple of them and put them on there and I'm just cutting them out of uh, just small uh, looks like maybe a little more than a sixteenth of an inch steel plate steel and uh, right there I got another one marked out there I just cut it up and then take it on a grinder and grind the edges off and then I end up with something like this which uh, I'll show you how I put that on here in a little bit. Okay, I gathered up some stuff to put these little plates on. Now they're going to go on sort of like this here or somewhere around in there. And you'll be able to slide this up for air intake and slide it down to shut the air off. And what I come up with is I got uh, a couple bolts and nuts here and I always keep springs when people, you know, you get them, find them, you're throwing them away or whatever, I keep springs. What I'll do is I'll uh, cut this spring in half. And I'll use half of it on this one and half of it on that one. And what this will do is the spring will hold pressure back on this plate so it's still easy to turn. And as long as that spring, or that spring's holding it tight on there, it'll be able to hold pressure on this to keep it from leaking air. So what we'll do is we'll weld this nut right onto the side of here and then we'll screw that plate down on there. Okay now you can see uh, what I meant by the spring. You put the spring in here and the spring holds pressure against this plate from this bolt. Now what we got to do is take this and weld it 
onto that pipe. Once we get that weld on that pipe, we'll put a little handle on here and we'll be able to slide that up and slide it down. What I'll probably do is weld this nut or this bolt right in the back of this. I'll screw it in and then I'll weld it right in the back because I don't think you'll ever need to take this back off again. So that'll allow that thing to turn when that bolt's on there for opening and closing. All right, as you can see, we got them both. Well, we got the uh, the little breather hole, this uh, bolt nut welded on there, and the bolt, I actually weld the bolt in there, springs on there. Works real nice for letting air in and out. Uh, the spring holds it tight against air. And we did get them both done. We got the other one done too. So uh, our next step, I think, is to figure out a pedestal, and I haven't figured that one out yet, but... We'll, uh, we'll work on that, and uh, we'll get the two top pieces put in there, you know, for a six-inch pipe to come out the top. Okay, <clears throat> all right, I think I decided on what I'm going to use for a base. I got some of these big old uh, uh, rotors that I was using. They're brake drum rotors I was using for uh, my brake drum forges, and I have quite a few of these, so I thought I'd mount one of these on the bottom of these. To give us a little pedestal for this stove to set on. Uh, I'm basically, I could show you how I'm going to do it. I think it'd be good because it's got enough weight to it that it won't tip over. So we're top, we're not top heavy now. We'll be heavy at the bottom. So I'll show you how I'm going to put them on. Okay, what I did was. This is the top piece that I cut out for the 6 inch pipe. This is your rotor, and I just burn a hole down through the bottom of it. So I figured I'd use this as a big washer. I'm going to try it, and I've got to put it down in there, and I'll snug it up real tight and see how it, uh, how it works. I'll just use a big old bolt and nut. It might be a little hard to reach this. Okay, something like that right there. And I'll just tighten this down really tight. And hopefully it'll hold this centered up and it'll be pretty good. So we'll make use of that piece of scrap air we cut out of the top anyhow. So I'll get that tightened up here and show you what it looks like when I get it done. Alright, now I think this is going to work out really well. Uh, that's on there pretty tight. And boy does it make it heavy on the bottom. So we can actually set this on a porch, you know, and uh, wouldn't have to worry about it uh, catching anything on fire on the porch, you know, because it's up off the porch, it's got a nice heavy base to it, won't have to worry about it tipping over. I think these are going to turn out pretty cool. So, what i got to do is get the base hooked onto the other one, and then, uh, I haven't done this up here because this, this piece of pipe, because I don't really have that piece of pipe, so... I'm still looking for that piece of pipe that I need to cut for the top to put the uh, stack on here. So, you know, sometimes you don't always have the parts, you have to go look for them, or sometimes I might even go to a salvage yard or something and look for a piece and get a pretty good deal on it. So, all right, these little guys are coming along pretty good, and I was surprised at how sturdy that is on there. And if it was the, I mean, even this far over. <laughs> take a long ways before it would tip over. I mean, I could go clear up to here and this thing's not going to tip over. So, that's a pretty good little setup there, I think. I like it. Okay, uh, I got Brandon down here today with me and he helped me wire brush these things up a little bit, try to get some of the rust off of them so when we paint them, it ain't got a bunch of stuff on them. I've been working on a couple uh, handles. We're making handles for the tops of them so you can move them around a little easier. You can get one person on one side and one on the other. And, unless you're big and strong, and carry it yourself. But uh, we got the handles on this one. They're already welded on there. Uh, we're just going to get these ones welded on. And then, uh, I haven't got the top plate on here yet. I know I told you guys about this plate. I actually have some steel up on the heel uh, that will 
work for that, but I'm finding a hard time cutting it, you know what I mean? I'd like it to look like a pretty good cut, you know, and the torch is not going to make a real pretty cut, but I guess there ain't much on these things that are very pretty anyhow. So, we got a couple pokers. I made up a couple pokers. They're just made out of an old set of uh, fireplace tools. Uh, I cut the ends off of them and took them, stuck them in the forge and uh, sharpened them up there a little bit. So I'll give them a nice little decorative uh, poker for each one of them. Now we're going to put a couple holders on here so we'll be able to put the poker or something sort of like this off the uh, cooker. Try to keep the handle away from there from getting too hot. But also when they're done they can put it in here and uh, they won't lose the poker. So we're going to get these handles put on. Okay, we got the handles uh, on here. We got all the handles on, uh, both of them, and I got the poker holder. What I did is I just took a piece of uh, half inch uh, pipe, steel pipe, and welded it on there, and then uh, just slide your poker down in there. Now we put them out in an angle like this so they'd stay a little cooler. This poker's not going to get quite as hot out here. I'm not saying that it won't get hot, because it's possible this thing's going to get hot enough that'll get hot. But It'll be a nice place to store it when you're done cooking. You can slide it in there and put it away and you don't lose it. So uh, I'm going to go in town probably tonight and I'm going to pick up uh, the two pieces of uh, pipe for the top of this. I'm going to get the, just a black uh, stove pipe for, outside, it's for a stove. We're going to get black stove pipe and two caps and then we'll pick up some paint while we're in there, some high temperature paint. Um, and then these, these things will be ready to uh, fire up, and uh, we're going to fire it up. We're going to see how one of them cooks anyhow. So you guys hang in there. We'll see how it goes here. Hey, everyone. We uh, got tired of waiting on trying to find a round piece of pipe. So I was going to try to make these couple rings for the top of these so I can be done with this project. So I went into Lowe's, and I got a piece of, uh, it's just an inch and a quarter by eighth inch. And I started bending a... Uh, collar out of it because I need two of these so and what I was doing is I was just wrapping it around another piece of pipe what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance that I need and chop this off and then finish wrapping it around the pipe weld it together and I'll have the ring that I need to be able to put the stack down on top of the uh, little fire pit so that's what I'm working on right now okay this is the ring I came up with so far it's not the perfect ring but it'll do. Actually, I had a piece of pipe to wrap it around, but the piece of pipe was too small. So I, I had to wrap it kind of loosely around there and uh, got it clamped up to where I could get it welded. I think it's going to work just fine. Now, this is where that piece is going to go. Weld it right to the top of here. This piece of pipe here is just a little bit bigger so it won't actually slide on there. And I have a tool here it's some type of a crimping tool. I believe it's for it is for this kind of pipe. And you just stick it on there and you work your way around. And what it does it is it puts a crimp around there. So uh, it'll go inside that pipe. So what I'm going to do right now is I'll go ahead and get this welded on and get this piece fit in. Okay, we got that uh, ring welded on there. And we got the stack uh, bolted in. Tied in there pretty good. Give you a look at it here. <clears throat> I just tacked it around there about four times and got it, uh, that piece, we crimped it, put it down inside. So now we're going to shoot a little bit of paint on that one and it is done. So I got to make another ring, get it welded on and crimp the end of the pipe, put the bolts in it and we'll have the other one done. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed my little uh, fire pit build. I'd actually take it out and build a fire in, but it's pouring down rain here and I'm not going to sit out in the rain and burn this fire and I want to get this video out. I ain't had a video out in over a month. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build. I think these are perfect little fire pits to put on your porch. It's actually safe to put on your porch. I'd put a concrete block under like a patio stand or something like that if I was going to put it on the porch or on the porch. But uh, out in the yard on a patio stand, this would be great. A couple chairs sitting around and some hot dogs and some marshmallows. I mean, I'm sure we can make up some pretty nice little s'mores on this thing. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe, leave me thumbs up, thumbs down, or a message. Until next time.